Hey guys, I'm back with the next episode of The 100. I'm super excited. Um, one, because I've been waiting to watch this episode for a couple days now, and um, also because I leave for Japan in less than 14 hours. So I need to get this out. This will not be edited before I leave. I really don't know about the schedule. I'm really behind on all of this, and I'm sorry for that. I actually just posted episode 3, so I've already watched episode 4. I'm not haven't even started editing that yet. I'm just really behind guys. I'm sorry. Last episode was the face behind the glass. We had naming day. So Delilah is basically gone, taken over by Priya the 7th, I think it was, who is the mother of Riker, which is the mechanic guy. I got a lot of people online saying, oh, Raven's moving so fast. Blah, blah. I'm like, she said like five lines to him. Like, calm down people. She's just being friendly and finding there's something that she's interested in saying to them, you know, there's bikes, mechanics, um, Shaw wanted to teach her how to ride a bike and all that stuff, but, you know, but yeah, so we have that, and Clark Griffin is dead, according to the script for the episode. They're gonna have to bring her back somehow, I don't know, but right now, Clark's body is taken over by Josephine, so, yeah. I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen with all of that. Yeah, I, I'm trying to remember what else. Oh, we have Octavia and Dioza teaming up. I'm so excited for this team up. They are two queens, they are badass. I'm super excited for that. And uh, we had Octavia protecting Rose and then Rose died and that just broke my heart. Literally, I like after the episode I went on Instagram and just like I've been like looking at all Octavia Rose edits because I'm just like Octavia deserves you know, poor girl, like, she can't care for anything because it leaves her, breaks her, dies, I don't know. Like she said, love is weakness, love no one, no one can hurt you. I'm not saying that she loved Rose, but she obviously cared for the kid. Anyways, yeah, I'm really excited for this, guys. I am sorry that the lighting is horrible. I am literally in a corner of a room. Anyways, guys. I don't know what's gonna happen this episode. I'm super excited. I just knew that I had to watch this before I left for Japan because, like, there's no way I was gonna be able to stay off Instagram and all of that for the entire time I'm in Japan. And I think there's a week break between the episodes, which works perfectly. Let's get started, guys. I'm super excited for this. This is my reaction to The 100, Season 6, Episode 5, The Gospel of Josephine. Look, Jade returned with your family. Oh, thank God. It's a rumor that you and your family were running away. You would take the word of a stranger over me? What's the matter, Lily? You don't recognize your best friend? Surprise. I heard that you were the one to find my last body after my tragic fall. Tassum shong so dali wu. Then shong huan wu. Your language, yes. English. She killed someone I cared for. I was protecting Sanctum. From you. So am I. Yours was the last face I saw before I fell. Now we're here. Holy I know shit. We have a lot to discuss. She just killed her! Get that freaking ship out of Clark's head. Holy shit, she just killed her. She just freaking killed her. Oh my god. Okay, so there's Wi Fi in this house. And the. the like. Just looks so. HD and crisp and beautiful. I don't get it like this when I watch it at home from my phone internet. This is the dance scene. Yeah, it's from the trailer. Is that French? So how are you going to explain to Clark's people that you've taken over her freaking body? If you just let me run the breeding program, we wouldn't be facing extinction right now. We're not talking about ablation again. Consent is key. blah -de blah Did this Ferrari I'm wearing consent to giving up her body? We brought you back because we love you. It was now or maybe never. Sorry. She's gonna pretend to be Clark. You said the daisy was your favorite flower. It is. Yesterday she told me her favorite flowers were cow and lilies. Cow and lilies are nice. <laughs> Something happened in that reliquary. It's like. Can I please go to school today? I don't see why not. Clark. I think you're gonna never get a combine. Ha! I'm taking me rare. Everything okay? She. Yeah. Fine. Fuck yeah. Let's get you to school. Mark, chill out. She'll be fine. 
<laughs> Chill out. What? Nothing. Happiness looks good on you. I take it you had fun with the doctor? Killian. Yeah. Let's just say it'll be a while until he recovers. Oh my god, please everyone speak trig around her. Yes. Interesting language. English lexical source, maybe a Creole via pigeon stage. What happened to the last name? Our little girl became one with the primes. She's acting like she doesn't even know me. That's what's wrong. Her child. I miss her too. He is returned, blesses us home. What does that even mean? It means that they believe in something. That faith should be respected. God. Jordan, we're guests. Jordan's I know you think you need to protect us all because you couldn't protect Octavia. Oh. But I can take care of myself. Oh, dang. So, oh, my queens. Yes. Oh, I saw, I saw a picture where she was like, only her head was above ground. So I'm guessing that waterbed sand, quicksand things coming in this episode. Wait, I don't get a cleaner. My baby's educated in the same time. Yes, we're not working with water. Call it your crucible. The harder you fight, the faster you die. Crucible. Gabriel's favorite play. Well, they're gonna they're gonna have a chance to have a a nice long conversation as they slowly sink to their depths. I'm so happy I stay away from promos because every time it's just like a big ass surprise. I'm like I don't know what the hell's going on unless like I know a scene from a trailer, which all I knew was a Josephine Stan scene. Uh, I can't believe she just like killed Kaylee. I think was her name. So apparently the primes looks like they don't all get along because. She was saying something about how Josephine killed one of her family or was going to kill one of her family or something like that. And they were saying that maybe Kaylee and her family were trying to escape. I'm just really confused on the thing. Um, I'm really interested to see that they have their own language system. One thing I really loved about The Hundred was Trig. Mainly because as an Andro student, I've had to take linguistic classes and everything, so I always found that super interesting. I'm interested in seeing what language they're talking, and Gaia being so smart talking to Clark and Trigg um, about Maddie, obviously, because, you know, Maddie's a nightblood, so let's, they're trying to keep it as low profile as possible. But she's talking to Trigg and Josephine doesn't understand, but the thing is, Trigg isn't that hard to understand once you break it down. So, and Josephine did a pretty good job of understanding what type of language it is. It's broken English, like, mixed in with, like, I'm not going to go into it. But Josephine's really smart, so I feel like she can kind of figure out what they're saying. But yeah, I'm super excited. And Maddie gets to go to school, which I love, but Guy is right. Like, if anything happens to Maddie, they will find out she is a nightblood and they will try to use her. And Josephine talked about a breeding program. So, in saying to- oh, it's back. Purifying of the bloodline. And you thought what we did in Becca's lab was bad? I mean, that would be a monster. Oh. Dora Visionary? <sighs> the wound would be able to breathe. Clark's not right-handed. What? Why are you writing with your right hand? Pioneers find the red zone and wind up dead. Or get caught in randomly occurring psychosis inducing eclipses. Rose is being offered to the woods. All of you are welcome. <gasps> the trees! Thank you. I need to know what's going on with those damn trees. Okay, just go inside, Josie. The Murphy is kind of cute. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Murphy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. This would be so interesting. Like father like son. <laughs> like father like son, Monty. <laughs> Still not over, Marper. <gasps> got to be kidding me. Yeah. How are you doing? What you would have done? The year before Prime Fire, anyway. Heart over ad. That was my favorite Bellamy. Oh! Gaia's in there, too. You too? They worship Nightbloods. I'd like to understand why that is. I'd like to leave. <laughs> no way I'm getting thrown. Not the flame. I didn't know the flame was. Oh, 
Oh my god, yes. I'm loving this episode. That's from the trailer. I knew there were skeletons in the background. I couldn't make it out. Becca created the flame after Apocalypse 1. She obviously provided the tech to Allegiance 3 before that. That means that... They're not commanders. Right. So what the hell are they? I want to tell them how to hack too. It's my kind of parent. I'm hacking needed. Earth Embryo 47 presents with Black Blood. Embryos. 21. I'll find a better way and easier way, okay? I promise. Gabriel just wanted to bring Josephine in. And. Dormant. It's not dead, they're dormant. Just kill that girl. Holy shit! That's her chip. Holy shit. Okay, so we get to see a grown-up, Gabriel and Russell. They've been experimenting on these embryos that Gabriel brought um, to bring back Josephine, basically. That's freaking crazy. Oh my god, I'm loving this storyline. Okay, so now Bellamy, Jordan, Murphy, Gaia are kind of putting the pieces together and figuring it out. Especially with Gaia's knowledge of the flame and all of that, she kind of like, you know, they they have a similar thing. You know, the flame is similar to this, except that this takes over the entire body, which is what they're now discovering. Holy shit. So, oh my god, I'm so interested in this. I really loved last episode. Last episode is probably my favorite of the season, and looks like this is going to be my new favorite of the season. I probably am going to say that for every new episode, but that was just great. Okay, so the brain is dormant. They said dormant. So there might be a way to reverse it to bring Clark back. Because they would have just... Russell said last episode the mind of the host is erased, but in here they said brain level or something, something dormant, which is completely different. If it's dormant, you can wake it back up. If it's erased, like, deleted, deleted, then you can't. Which is awesome because it's kind of like a computer and I just I'm thinking of season four when Raven compared her brain to the computer and was saying, um oh, is it back? Is it real? This time. This is real. Is it real this time? So she was awake for some of the other the eclipse. Affects more than just insects. My memory drives. We reverse engineered them to upload our entire minds. So their memory drives were just to like preserve their knowledge of the world in case they died. So they just would have all the information. He reverse engineered it to upload. Congratulations, Dr. Santiago. You've conquered death. But he's against it. Once the adult host consciousness is gone, the mind stored in the drive uploads with ease. They're immortal. They're murderers. They murdered Delilah. It's not murder if they go willingly. Did that girl look willing to you? By manipulating people into believing they were sacrificing themselves. It's like Delilah's mother said. Not so much for respecting their faith. Paralytic. I mean, no offense. Maddie. I have to get her before they find out what she is. I'll go with you. Shit. Shit! Now she knows Maddie's a nightblood. I'm sorry, I doubted you. Oh my god, I can't I'm believe Jordan just... referenced yeah, the head of the track. It doesn't matter because Josephine. Sam, but I agree with Clark. Would you like to know why your brother left you out here to die? We're gonna have a nice long conversation. You're a hurricane leaving a path of destruction in your wake. Whatever you think you know about me, you don't. And you're wrong. I used to be you. He's not getting away. He's studying us from the trees. That's why he told us not to struggle. I need to know. Do you want to die? She does. Just say the word and I put you out of our misery. You think you can scare me? Do it. Oh, my baby. Self-inflicted. You see, you failed at that, too. You're trying my patience so as long as you draw breath, you can turn it around. Everybody hates you right now, so what? Talk to me when your face is in the history books next to the worst people that have ever lived. I love this team up. Oh my god. 
She was right. I can wait longer than you. <laughs> okay, so he was talking about mind drives, um, which Gabriel reverse engineered to upload the entire consciousness. Bella, me, and Co were gonna try to wipe any trace that they were in there, which doesn't matter because Josephine was in there the entire time because Clark is gone. But the thing is, dormant. The keyword is dormant. If the brain is dormant, then there's a way to bring her back. It's different as like different than erased. I'm interested in that. So Gabriel, from what we see, wanted to bring back Josephine. And from what Russell said, he said, we'll find a more humane way to do this, I promise. That shows that Gabriel wasn't 100% on board on what they were doing, but he, I guess it was just like his love for Josephine, or that she did mention that he was obsessed with her. So maybe that, but that's what drove him to create or reverse engineer the mind drives to be able to upload it into an empty brain and why they did all those trials um, just to bring back Josephine. Now Jordan knows that Delilah's gone because her mind's been rendered dormant in order for her Priya to be uploaded. Gaia just kind of gave away that Maddie's a nightblood, which is what Clark or Josephine wanted to know how many other nightbloods there is are. I don't know what Josephine's genetic or reading project is, but I'm guessing they're going to use Maddie and her blood in order to make it a reality, if they choose to make it a reality. Um, because it looks like Russell and her mom are against it. Now, Josephine's freaking crazy. From what we saw with Abby saying that the girl who wrote that book was crazy because they thought the things they did in Becca's lab were horrible like and this girl is talking about I don't know it's a breeding project so I'm guessing they want to make these embryos with uh, night blood in order to have more hosts and that way oh it's back they have more how many more I don't know at least one but there are bound to be others if not down here then up on their ship there isn't which is what do you say fine but I hope you know this doesn't end well Either they find out who I am and kill me before burning Sanctum to the ground, or we body snatch more of them and kill the rest so they don't burn Sanctum to the ground. Josephine's a bit of a bitch. Yeah, and what's the alternative? Go back to space, sleep for another hundred years, and I'm even less likely to support life. I agree with John. No one calls him John. I don't like who they are either, but... Becca wasn't a god either. She was a scientist who made herself a night blood in the lab, the same way Abby did the clerk. Now she knows she's not so she's doing better. born in night blood. Now she knows they can make more night blood. No, oh, Jordan, no. Wait. Are we on different sides of this? I know how they survive seems harsh. Their world works. We destroyed ours. This isn't about us. So we can judge them, but not ourselves. You want to know the difference between us and them? This is the face man. Come carry on. I don't know. Rip clean on a flash bar. Oh. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that last phrase? It sounds like flashback means flashback. Oh no! Josephine Michael. Nice to meet you. Oh my god. God, we shouldn't have gone along. How could no one tell it wasn't Clark? Clark would never let Maddie go to school, knowing the risks. She was acting weird. She called Murphy John. Who calls Murphy John except Amori? She was writing with her right hand when she's left-handed. She's just, oh my God. They should have known. <laughs> I mean, of course, like, you know, if I was in that situation, I probably wouldn't have noticed either because, you know, there's so much other shit going on at the moment. God, but what Bellamy said, I was like, oh, like I know he, I you know he does like feel it and everything, like all the people he's killed and stuff. But do you think Octavia doesn't? I'm sorry, I just have to bring that back because I'm so mad at him for leaving his sisters. Like I understand why he did it. She is a threat to the safety of Sanctum, but guess what? Sanctum's a fucking crazy. So yeah. Anyways, I heard a lot of people saying that maybe Octavia and Dioza are going to be the ones who have to rescue them. 
they might team up with the Children of Gabriel, which would be very interesting. I know a lot of people were like, I bet you the Children of Gabriel are the good guys, which is kind of what I thought at first, too, when they said death to primes, and then we later learned more about the primes. But the thing that really got me thinking, and this was after I had filmed my reaction and everything, was when they said death is life. They don't believe in the immortality of the primes because they see it as something that shouldn't be then I liked how Guy was talking about this isn't what Becca would have wanted and all that stuff. But now Josephine knows that Clark was made into a Nightblood. And since she knows Clark was made into a Nightblood and the chip in her consciousness was still able to upload itself into Clark, that means they can make more Nightbloods and upload the rest of the Primes into them. So I'm guessing that's what clicked in her brain and when she wanted to go talk to her parents or whatever. They're gonna try to make more Nightbloods. What if they use all the people on who are in cryosleep? Because those people can last forever. If they make them all Nightbloods and put them back into cryos cryosleep, then they have like 400 plus people that they can upload their consciousness into for who knows how long. Okay, here's the deal. I'm gonna talk after you die to save my son. So what are you really accomplishing? She gets a hero's death. But if your silence helps the wrong side, are you still a hero? We killed none of yours. So who's the villain? I'm gonna say you since you kidnapped little kids. Feel free to prove me wrong and toss me that rope. Shit. Fuck. Claire? Is this where we're gonna see Octavia versus Blood right now? Wants to go. Oh my baby girl! She died this flare. No, she doesn't die yet. Did she get caught up in the flare? She's gone. Oh, girls are trying to save Octavia. She's so alive. Did she just age? Does she just age? Like her, or maybe, you know, her hand just got pruny from being in liquid for so long. Liquid gel type thing. Yeah, that was weird. Okay, Josephine freaking tranked Bellamy. Holy crap. Um, but Riker is teaching Echo, or mostly Amori and Raven, how to build a radiation shield. So they could potentially find a way to survive and just like stay the hell away from Sanctum. I don't know, and Sanctum seems like really afraid to go out because like 200 years and they they had mapped just that. But I'm guessing maybe the place Sanctum is on is also a place where the temporal anomaly, anomaly flares maybe don't reach. Because there just seems to be a whole thing about that which I really want to know more about. I'm loving Dioza and Octavia's team up. And Xavier, I think it's his name, did have a, a point where he's like, you killed 12 of us, we haven't killed any of them, or any of you guys. And she's like, but you kidnapped children. But the thing is, they don't know about the whole Nightblood situation. So the, the children of Gabriel, you know, I think, well, like I was telling before the last commercial ended, how they were saying death is life because they're against the immortality and they want to save all the Nightbloods so that the Sanctum, so the Primes won't use them anymore and all of that. Because you replaced pills <laughs> Oh, Jackson. What are you doing? We stood by Blood Rhino during the dark years and Marcus was the only one who tried to stop it. I was just doing my job. Set by every war criminal ever. It was your fucking idea, Abby. Not even Jackson knows it was her idea. He did what he needed to survive. She's gonna get Murphy to help her, but I don't. And Murphy's currently fearing death and probably wants the immortality, so. God damn it. You're not Clark. I'm gonna be honest with you. Clark's dead. How would you like to be immortal, too? Murphy, don't do this. Don't do this. Murphy, don't do this. Murphy, don't do this. Please don't do this. No. No, no, no. What's he gonna do? He's gonna get the information. He's gonna get the information, and then he's going to... to... to tell everyone. Right? Oh my god. This episode. So good. 
Murphy, you're a good guy, okay? You've learned from your mistake. The thing is, god damn, that stupid red sun getting him killed and him being afraid of death and hell and all that shit, and now he's gonna... God, okay, so Clark is going to, or Josephine is going to use Murphy to teach her more about how to behave and be Clark. My thing is, what the hell are you gonna do with Bellamy? You freaking tranquilized him. Is he just gonna stay tranquil and locked up? I mean, maybe if she does get Murphy's help, they could be like, Mel Bellamy went with some people of Sanctum to go map charters. But then Jordan will be like, you let him go alone. But I don't know what's going on. I kind of already talked about my thoughts during the commercial, so I don't, uh, there's not too much for me to say. Yeah, so my big questions are, what happened to Octavia in that thing? Why is her hand all old? Two, is Murphy truly going to help Josephine or is he going to get the more information? Because Murphy is a survivor and he does whatever he needs to do to survive and she is offering him immortality. But the thing is, how are you going to engineer a mind drive the way Gabriel did in order to make him immortal? I mean, it's Becca's technology. I mean, most of the people in Sanctum are all geniuses, so... Maybe there is a way, but I just, I obviously don't trust her. She did say Clark is dead, but I'm still sticking by that whole dormant thing. Um, because it was said by Gabriel himself who invented the serum. I don't know. I'm having a real problem with Abby. She said by Reina and she is like, Marcus is the only one who resisted. Yeah, and then you had Octavia break him in order to get him to survive. And I mean, said by every war criminal ever. Really, Abby? Is they all feel bad about it, okay? They all did things to survive. Said by every war criminal ever, okay? Jackson did what he needed to do to survive. None of them liked it. But if he didn't, he would have gotten Octavia to freaking make him. You know? I hate how Abby's like, at least I regret your, I regret my decisions or how she's like, um, difference between you and me is I regret it and you only regret losing or something like that. The thing is, Octavia did what she needed to do to get her people to survive. And then the other thing is, you only regret it when it involves Kane. You haven't told anyone else that it was your idea. It only, it only seems like she cares about it when it it, it, it involves Kane, which really annoys me. Kane is dead, Abby. He has 10 minutes tops getting out of Pryo. Jackson said it. You're talking about 15 hour surgery. You have to stop the hemorrhaging in time that he doesn't lose all his blood and die from blood loss. I'm trying to think if there's a way. Even with that algae in his coma, he's still going to be bleeding out and you have to stop that in time and stop it in time to get his kingdoms to function, to get everything. Those are 15 hours, like, I don't know what they're gonna do. Okay, Bellamy knows that Clark is not Clark anymore. She trained him. I wonder what she's gonna do with him. Now Josephine's tempting Murphy to switch sides. I'm kind of upset that the trailer gave us a little bit more than, than just the first couple episodes. So we're gonna get Octavia versus Blood Raina. That's how I knew Octavia wasn't dead. Um, I thought maybe while she was under, she was gonna have the whole thing. Ooh, and then she could have fought like herself while she was under, and if she had lost, that's when she died. That would have been pretty cool. I don't want Octavia to die, obviously. She's my queen. But um But we also know that Bellamy is gonna and Murphy or something with Clark are gonna be choking Russell. So my question is when does that come in play? Because Bellamy has to wake up. And is is that Josephine or Clark? Maybe it is Josephine and she's working with Murphy. And the reason that they're okay with him choking Russell is because she's going to make more Nightbloods. And she's going to be able to upload her dad into someone else pretty soon. And that way is a way to prove her loyalty. Be like, I was able to get Josephine out of my head and here's a way to prove it. Let's kill Russell. And she's going to have Murphy coaching her. Oh my god, Murphy, please don't do this. Murphy, I love Murphy. I don't want him to do this. I want to know more about the Riker guy. I know a lot of people were pissed because they were like, Raven's moving on too fast. Raven's doing this. Raven's doing that. Okay, Raven's mad at Clark. Yeah, okay. People get mad at people, okay? It's been like two days for her um, since Clark turned her in to get tortured. She has a right to be mad. 
but also like she sent five sentences to the guy. The truth is I don't want Riven to have a new love interest so soon after Shaw because I think her character is so much more than just a love interest. Um, I liked that in season three and four she didn't have a love interest actually because she was badass. But I'm, I'm liking this Riker guy. He seems pretty chill. He doesn't seem... He's a prime, but like, you know, he wasn't spending the whole, like, holy day with all the other primes, and he just wanted to, like, fix the bike for his mom. And then when his mom came out, he kind of had this, like, mm, iffy kind of attitude. I don't know. I'm liking him. Maybe he's more with, like, Gabriel's ideas or ideals. I don't know. The whole temporal anomaly thing. Temporal, I'm pretty sure, is rooted with time. So is it, like, a time travel type thing so like the girl that octavia killed last episode something about like are you gonna walk into the anomaly to go find him the old man which i believe is gabriel maybe the temporal anomaly is a way to keep him alive or talk to a past version i don't know i'm really confused about this planet but i'm super excited to find out more about it what else i'm trying to think i really have to pee so trying to think what else there was to talk about in this episode. There is a lot, but I'm definitely interested in seeing what Clark slash, or what Josephine's gonna do. Obviously, we're gonna get Clark back because we saw her in Mount Weather, um, like, facing her demons and stuff like that, so I don't know, is that, like, what she's doing right now while she's trapped in Josephine's body? Is that what she's gonna do later? Is the fact that she is not natural-born nightblood going to affect the flame working? Or the the memory drive working, you know, Josephine right now is thinking, oh, okay, so this Clark person was made into a nightblood and my memory drive was able to upload and hold in her. So that means we can make more nightbloods and upload the rest of the primes. And Jordan's suffering over Delilah. Hopefully there's a way to get Delilah back and Clark back. But yeah, I think that's Everything I kind of want to say about this episode, I'm kind of sad we didn't have any Raven in this episode. I know a lot of people were annoyed at her, but I really loved her, and she has saved their asses multiple times. Everyone's saying that Raven wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for Clark, but the same is reversed. Clark wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for Raven. There are multiple situations that could have resulted in Clark's death, like the City of Light, <laughs> or the grounder bomb and the bridge and fighting the war with the grounders or helping them get into Mount Weather with the radios and stuff and blowing up the dam. Um, the thing is, this show is a big moral gray area. No one in this show is a good guy. No one is 100% a bad guy. Some career he was fucking insane, but he did care about his daughter, which is something I found really interesting. Anyways, they're just survivors. And Murphy's a really good example of that because he does whatever he needs to do to survive, and that's why I'm scared about him betraying all of them. Yeah, there are no good guys in the show. Everyone has done crap. Everyone everyone in the show has done something that I do not forgive them for. Every single one, even my queen Octavia. I love her, but she has done stuff that I don't forgive her for. Burning the hydro farm, I don't forgive her for that. But I understand why she did it. I don't forgive Clark for shock or shock collaring Maddie and using it and then turning in Raven and all of them. I don't forgive Bellamy for the massacre of the 300 innocent grounder army. You know, I know, I know he didn't do it alone, but it's just something I've never been able to forgive Bellamy for. I'm trying to think what else. I don't forgive Abby for the dark year. I don't forgive Kane for betraying one crew and getting more than half of their people killed in that gorge just because he didn't want Octavia in there. Like, there's there's stuff I don't forgive all the characters for, but I still love all the characters, and I try my best to understand why they made their choices. Um, obviously, I have favorites, but after a while, uh, after a couple days, when I'm still thinking of the 100 and everything, I kind of understand a little bit more of the other people's choices. You know, this is my reaction from just watching the episode. So if you don't agree with something I say, odds are I probably later on look back and I was like, okay, I probably still agree with some of the stuff I said, but some of it is probably like, okay, I understand the other person's point of view. But anyways, yeah, great episode of The 100. I'm not sure if I like this one or the last episode better. Um, I really enjoyed both of them. This was a great episode. I'm super interested in seeing what's going to happen next. I won't be 
be able to watch the next episode when it airs. I will be in Japan. But I'm super excited to see what the rest of the season holds. I think it's 13 episodes, so we're almost halfway there, which is crazy. Once again, guys, I'm so sorry that this is late, but thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys as soon as I can with the next episode of The 100. Bye, guys.